If the spirit, if we don't ask Jesus Christ to come into our heart, we have a spirit, which is definitely the spirit that Christ has given us to be from jumpstart. But it's a, it's a, it's not the spirit of Jesus Christ. It's our spirit, and we make decisions and we make choices. And sometimes those choices aren't really the right choices. That was one of my problems. I always made choices in life. And I thought, well, this is gonna, this is this choice that I make here is gonna take me here, and I'm gonna be going this way, and things are gonna come out really good. Or maybe it's a job, you know? Well, maybe I should get this job. And maybe I should get this. A year, a few years back, years ago, this uh, man came to me and he said, we need someone to work at a girl's home to supervise and to be in the kitchen, and to, but to supervise everything. And I said, well, I don't know, because at that time, uh, my ex-husband and I, we were on television, and we had a little gospel road show, and like, I enjoyed it. You know, I enjoyed doing that. And I lived out in the country. We had nobody on any side of us, and across the street was forest. It was wonderful. I loved where I was. And I said to him, I don't know. You know, that would mean I'm still gonna be in the country, but it's going to be different, and I don't know. And I said, I don't even know how to know. Like, I didn't, you know, because I enjoyed where I was. And he says, write a list out, Anne. He says, write a list out of all the good things and all the bad things about moving. And he says, that way will give you a better idea. And, of course, pray about it. Well, by the time I sat there and I put the good things and the bad things, I realized it would be in the best interest of me and my ex-husband to move, well then he was my husband, to move to this place and to, to go into a different field. I could still, we could still do the TV show and stuff like that, but it was better. So I had to use, you know, my brain here, and, but I needed the advice of other people to make sure that what I was really doing was the right move, you know? And some of us go through things like that. Do we make the right choices? Do we make the right? Some of the choices I made were really bad, and they got me into a lot of trouble because I chose the wrong friends. I chose the wrong people to be around. Um, it's hard sometimes because if we're in situations where I think loneliness is one of the hardest things that people have to cope with. I really do. I know sometimes it's been really difficult in my life at different times because you're alone and you're trying to you're trying to say well you know I want to make this choice I want to do this but yet if I do this I may be alone you know I may be alone or I may do this and this might happen and most people don't want to be alone so the thing is we're made up of body soul our soul is our thinking part our soul is has got to do with that you know, it's got to do with that. It's got like, is this the right choice to make? Is this the right thing to do? Is this the right thing? What should I do in this situation? And it's our mind part. But you know, one day, the body's gonna die. I feel my age already, especially. And in this heat, you probably all feel your age. It's like it's getting hot and monkey. And you know, when you were 16, it didn't bother you that much because you could run around and do stuff like that. But you know, as you get a little bit older, you start to feel the heat. You know, you know, you start to say, oh, like I spoke to that girl just a few minutes ago, and she says, boy, I have a shower and I'm cool, and I come out of the shower, and I'm not cool anymore. You know, the minute you get out of the shower, bam, it hits you, and you're, you're roasting. And so it's like our bodies affect us that way, but our mind also affects us in other ways. And our spirit man, the thing that's breathing, the thing that, I wish I had diagrams. I wish I could bring up three, three individuals and say, okay, this is your body. This is inside. This is your soul. And this is your spirit. If, it says the spirit, this is the source of power and control for both your body and soul, your spirit. It is either evil or good, darkness or light, unholy or holy, unclean or clean, of Satan or of God. And you know, someone, I, I listen a lot to Perry Stone and I listen to Dave Wilkerson. And you know, the other night they were saying, in fact, for a few weeks, I keep going over some of the same things. And he said, you know, it all boils down, it all boils down to there is a fight for your soul. There's a fight for your soul. You're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. There's no in-between. There isn't any in-between. 
And the thing is, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your heart, the heart part is the soul, the spirit. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ into you in that way, you're not going to heaven. That's what the Bible talks about. It says, the unsaved man or woman who only has the first birth is in eternal danger. Since the body and soul of the unsaved man or woman are bonded to the dead spirit of this world, when the world's physical elements and spiritual components, including death, are cast into the lake of fire in Revelations 20, 13 to 15, those eternal soul, souls living or already dead will perish with them. And, and you know, I... I talk to a lot of people about this in my past and they'd say, you know, Anne, I don't need Jesus in my heart. I don't need a crutch. Has anybody ever said that to you? Maybe you've said it yourself. I know there was a period in my life when I thought, my mother's too holy. You know, she's going to church, she's going to Bible study. She's, you know, and I'd say, Mom, why do you do this? And she'd say, Anne, it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. And I would think, I don't need that in my life. Like, I can make my life go in a good direction, and I can really make my life work out. And it's like walking down a road. That's what I said to this man yesterday. It's like walking down a pathway. You can either choose this way, or you can choose this way. And you're walking down that pathway, and you look and you say, wow, like all my friends are going this way. You know, I want to go with my friends. I want to party. I want to do this. I want to, I want to have fun. I want to laugh. And then there's another little, maybe a narrower pathway. And you say, but at the end of this pathway is life everlasting. When you pass away, your body's going to die. As, as you know, look in the mirror. I see a lot of wrinkles I didn't have 15 years ago. It's like, oh, God, I'm getting wrinkles. Then you try to camouflage it with all the makeup and the creams and everything. But that's our destiny. We're, we're doomed to live the, our certain amount, we're a lot of 70 years, and then after that, some might live to be 90. I, I watched a video yesterday of a lady, she was 85, I think, one lady was, and she looked pretty good. And she ate right, and she did the right things, and she said, this has probably got a lot to do with it. Maybe, you know, from her ancestry too, you know, there was the genes or something. But, you know, there comes a time in your life when your time is up. Your time is up. I saw on Facebook yesterday uh, a young man, 34, he was working on a go-kart. Just working on a go-kart and he decided to take it out a ride on the road to test it. And how many times, I remember my husband doing that, working on a, a, a motorcycle. And I'm just taking it up the street end and I'll be right back. Just boom, boom. You know, I just want to test it. And this is what this man was doing. He was testing it. But he never made it back because he was hit by a car mm -hmm. and killed instantly, instantly. And every one of us sitting here, we're coming to that place where we might not be here tomorrow. We don't know. We don't know if we are or not. But the most important thing is to get right with God to make sure that we're going to keep on going. You all right, honey? I'm great. Okay. <laughs> but that's the most important thing. Because the body is going to die. The spirit man and the soul is going to live on. It's going to live on. Romans 7, 21 to 23. Your soul is saved, but your flesh, your present physical body is still dead and cannot be salvaged. It will perish and return to the earth. You get a new body later. Your present flesh will still lust to do those things that are unlawful. How many times have we come to the Lord, we've accepted him into our heart, and you know, you, I, I went through this, I don't know about you, but I went through this, well if I accept Jesus Christ into my heart, you know, my life is going to be just wonderful. <laughs> Everything's going to be great. But you know what it is? The minute that you accept Jesus Christ into your life, what happens is, old Satan gets, what? They've accepted Jesus Christ, doesn't he? And what does he do? He throws things at you constantly, constantly, constantly. And you're like, oh, man, I never had this trouble when I was in the world. And I, I have said this to people. I never had any trouble when I was in the world. I just thought, oh, party all the time, just have fun. But the minute that I made up my mind to follow Jesus Christ, everything was coming at me. Like, you know, 
In fact, just these last few weeks, it's really strange because my sister called me about a month ago, very sick. Her eye was really in bad shape. The week after that, my brother had a heart attack. He's okay now. I mean, he still, you know, has to take it easy. But it was just like one thing after another thing and another thing. And now one of the guys that I write to in prison, he's only, and I want you to pray for him. He's 27 years old. He's got life. And I've been writing to him for about six months. And uh, I got a letter from his friend saying they just took him to the hospital. He was sick. And, and nobody, you know, in the prison system, nobody knows nothing. You know, they don't tell you, well, he's getting better or he's, you know, whatever. But the one prisoner said to me, he says, you know, Anne, if anything should happen to this guy, he says, one thing I know is he walked with God. He walked with God. He has given his life. I read his history, and the history of him when he was four, he had been molested. And then he was taken from the home, and he was put in foster home to foster home to foster home. And foster homes are no good either. Maybe some of you have been raised that way. You have experienced that. But you know, there's so many troubles that people have in their life. And even when you come to Christ, there is problems too. But you know the hope that we have? I know. I know that through every trial and tribulation and problems that I go through now, I know that I have Jesus Christ in my heart, in my life, and I have peace. I have peace. Yes, I get concerned if someone says my sister's sick or my brother's had a heart attack and been rushed to the hospital. Yes, because we have that, we, we're in this earth and these things are, are happening. But the thing is, we have a peace inside that we know that no matter what comes our way, that Jesus Christ is with us. He's with us. He's, he's not going to leave us. He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Never. Never. <coughs> he's not going to be with us for an hour and, and, and go off golfing somewhere. He is with us no matter what. In 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, and it said, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray to God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, once you accept Jesus Christ and you, you know, sometimes it's a struggle and you're saying, oh, man, and your friend keeps calling, like, why don't you come out tonight? Like, what's wrong? What's wrong? Just because you accepted Jesus, you can come, still come and do things with me. You can still do this. You can still do this. And inside you're saying, I don't really want to, but yet I feel, you know, you feel that addiction, whatever it is. It could be anything. It, ladies, it could be men. I think that was one of my problems. Men, it could be ladies. It could be anything. Chocolate, ice cream. I've been going crazy for two weeks on ice cream. <laughs> I'm trying to lose weight, okay? But I've been going crazy. And you know, the other day, I told some of you, I think yesterday, the other day it was so funny because, and this is, God is good, you know, God is good. But I'm sitting there and I'm saying, oh, I wish I had ice cream. I just wish I had some ice cream. And I thought, Anne, you're trying to lose some weight. You don't need the ice cream and this and that. And it was so funny. My neighbor called me later on in the day, about 6, 7 o'clock. Said, he said, would you come outside for a few minutes? In about five minutes, come on outside. And him and his friend came over. And what did they have? Ice cream. <laughs> and I didn't look at that as a bad temptation. I just, I really thank God. I said, wow, God, you're amazing. Because here was me craving this ice cream. And it came to me. It just was handed in my lap. And it was a banana split ice cream. So good. So good. But it's like, if we, when we come to Jesus Christ, if we don't come to him, our journey is going to go down a road and we're on our way to hell. Hell is not good. It's a lake of fire. It's not good. If we come to that place where we say, Jesus, take my life. Take everything of me. Take my spirit, take my soul, come in and live inside of me and change me. I'm not happy. Most of the people I talk to, I've talked to for years, they're not happy. And if you mention, well, maybe you need to, to meet the Lord, they say, well, no, no, he's not going to fill that void. But, you know, I think everybody was created with an emptiness inside that only Jesus Christ can fill. Now, it doesn't mean when you come to Jesus Christ, that you've got to take all your makeup off and wear your hair in a bun and wear your long skirts 
and you know pray 20 hours a day and all that because the Lord came to give us life and give us it more abundantly I wouldn't go back to the lifestyle that I had years ago for anybody anybody any amount of money I wouldn't do it because I have a peace now I used to remember laying in bed in the middle of the night I go out partying have fun Yahoo you know I had a great time and then I'd go home and I'd sleep for a couple hours and I'd wake up and I remember laying there feeling empty I don't know if you ever went through that but empty inside empty and I thought man what is wrong with me why am I so empty inside I don't understand it and sometimes I even prayed and I say God what, did, what am I doing like what am I and of course I knew what I was doing but it was like how come I'm not full of joy I, how come I don't have that peace, the peace that passes all understanding? I didn't have it. You know, when I got it, when I came to the Lord, and I said, Lord, take me. I've tried my life the way that I thought was right, and I really messed it up. I messed it up. I messed it up, and I lost a lot of friends over it. I lost a lot of, a lot of things over it. But you know, when I found Jesus Christ, I found that that peace came in. And in every situation now, I have peace. I have a peace. Bert, are you looking at your watch or are you scratching your arm? <laughs> no, I, come on, Ann, come on. I feel the sweater. <laughs> it's probably sweater. I feel the sweater. <laughs> I'm not looking at my watch. But you, you know. Look at my watch? No, I'm just kidding. Look at timing. You better no. I have a man right here that times me. Oh. When he passes out, <laughs> it's true, and I love him for it. I love him for it because when he, but he hasn't passed out yet. Right. So I'm just, I'm gonna keep talking. It's hot. When he lands on the floor and someone runs over to give him mouth to mouth, then I know I've talked too long. Oh. <laughs> Don't do it to have some woman to come give you mouth to mouth. Either. He's got a woman. Oh, right his here. wife is there. She'll. Have a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but God is good. God is good. And if there's anybody today that has not accepted Jesus Christ, I urge you, I really urge you, because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't. I mean, I might not be here next Sunday. I might not. None of us are promised tomorrow. We're promised today. We're promised today. But if there's anybody that would like to ask Jesus Christ to come into their heart, please come up. We'll pray. We've got some people that will pray with you. And we'll get a new journey started, a new life started, just a new life started. Maybe you're tired of the way things are going in your life. <clears throat> Maybe you're tired of your old friends. I used to get kind of tired of my old friends because they were my friends if I had some money in my pocket. If I didn't have any money in my pocket, it was like, you know, well, I remember, this is terrible. I remember a friend, I hope she doesn't see this video, but I remember a friend, and every night, you know, we'd get in the car and we'd, you know, boot around town and party and da-da, you know, all this kind of stuff, and see who's at this place, and then we'd go to some other place, see who's there, just to have fun. And, but then I noticed after about a month, I noticed it was really strange. Every time we went out, I had to fill the tank and I had to pay for everything and I thought well this isn't going to happen anymore so one day I pulled up at the, I picked her up and I pulled up at the garage and I said fill it up and then I looked at her and I said you're paying tonight <laughs> ask Angie Angie knows I'm pretty blunt and <laughs> but I said you're paying tonight she goes what I said yeah I says I have paid every night now, I worked so but it was my whole paycheck almost because I was always bumming around and you know she did pay but you know that was the kind of friends that kind of hung with me was the ones that if you had money they were your friend and you probably notice that now if you got money in your pocket but if you don't have any food in your cupboard and no money in your pocket <laughs> friends are very scarce except the true ones the true ones but if you don't know Jesus Christ today I urge you to make that decision because one day it may be too late it may be too late. Just like that man yesterday that was driving just to test out his go-kart. I can see him. He probably was really proud that he got it going. And he, I'm just going to run out the street, and real quick, and I'm going to, or not in, but I'm going to run out the street real quick, and I'll be back. And then what happens? He doesn't make it back. 
and he's left a family and kids. It's really a shame. It's really a shame. Now, I don't know that man's heart. He might have been right with God. I don't know. But any one of us today could go through something where our life is snuffed instantly. We got a good phone going on there, right? <laughs> or is that the bell to, I got gonged, right? <laughs> but Jesus Christ is the answer to every problem, to every situation. He's a healer. He's not only the savior, he's a healer. He's a friend. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. He can comfort us when we're going through things. And he's with us all the time, no matter what the situation is. He's with us. He's with us. Even though we don't see him, all that, Jesus Christ is with us. So if there's anybody that would like to give their heart to Jesus, come on up. We'll pray. And if not, I'll give you some second here. It won't give you long. But if there's anybody, anybody that wants to ask Jesus into their heart, you don't have to come up to the front here to do it. You can lay in your bed at night and you can say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need you to come into my heart. I want change in my life. I want a change in my life. I want a change. I was getting tired of this <coughs> old life. I was tired of it. Tired. But when I came to Christ, it was different. I found new meaning for life and new peace and joy. So you don't have to come up here. You can say it at home. Get into the Bible. Find out what God is all about. Pray. He wants to hear you. You coming up, baby? Good for you. Now, your name is? Colin. Cap Colin. I keep calling him Kevin. Kevin for some reason. Okay, like, give me your hands. I always like taking people's hands. You know why? Because I was taught years ago, if you take somebody's hands and look into their eyes, it makes it more personal. Right? Okay, so here we, we're going to say this little prayer. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new person. Make me a new person. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. Take over my life. Take over my life. And I will live for you. And I will live for you. Forever. Forever. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless Colin, Lord, as he started on a new journey. He loves you, Lord, and he wants to be right with you, Father God. We just ask that you bless him and protect him from this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good boy. Amen. Anybody else? Good job, Bobby. Bye. <laughs> Anybody else? No. I want to thank everybody for making, we got sandwiches. We got all this kind of goodies going on. And... Oh my God, I just remembered something. What? We have somebody that had a birthday last week. Oh! oh. I, I wonder who it was. <laughs> Richard! <laughs> happy birthday to you. Say happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Something special for Richard. Are they bringing it out? Um, I hope so. Are you girls bringing it out? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sing again. What, honey? We're gonna have to sing again. Sing again. That's your girlfriend's first name. <laughs> What's your wife's first name? What's your wife's first name? Probably forgot. If you could look into Richard's eyes right now, like I'm looking into them, you're, you wouldn't. He is going to cut me short like next Sunday for about 10 minutes. I can tell. He's just got that little daggers. What? Yeah, I'm going to do that in a minute. Well, okay, I'll give you another announcement. Some people have come to me and they've said, and we want to kind of belong to the lighthouse. We want to kind of belong. So I had this bright idea of, I may have to cut this short. I had this bright idea of making up little, little cards that you can put in your wallet. 
Okay, we're going to stop. I'll, go, I'll continue this later. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 